This right here is my 1978 Evinrude 9.9 .9 two-stroke outboard motor and it's got a problem. Well, it's, it's got a lot of problems, but it's got a problem that I'm here to talk to you about today. And that's this tiller arm. You see, when I rotate it, it goes about maybe an eighth of a turn. You look down in here, gears are moving. Heck, that shaft even spins, but uh, it's, that's not an eighth of a turn right there. And when we look down in here, we got nothing. And the problem is, that gear right there is seized inside of this aluminum housing. So no matter what I do with that tiller handle, the accelerator doesn't move. And I've already removed this pin, and the whole accelerator linkage down here works just fine. All of this over here is totally free, not an issue. This guy's super free. Heck, that gear down there is even free. It's just this sucker right here that is seized. So today, what I'm going to be doing is, one, figuring it out for myself, and two, relaying the information to you on how to disassemble this whole assembly right here down to these gears, because I need to get that gear out. In order to get that gear out, I gotta get everything else out of here. So, uh, come along for the ride and uh, let's see if we can make this work. All right, so here's the quick story on, on the motor, if that's such a thing. This is my double first cousin's once removes husband's father's motor, which the son of that guy got, and then the wife of that guy then gave to me because she was sick of the thing uh, sitting in her yard where she had to mow and weed eat around it. So, uh, from what I can tell from the registration stickers on it, this thing hadn't run in at least 16 years. 2004 was uh, the last time anyone paid taxes on it. And, uh, yeah, uh, it was a hot mess when I found it, and it's still a hot mess. Uh, I'd been sitting outside for that entire time with no cover. Well, that cover, but no cover over the motor. Ugh, the lower unit is cracked, but luckily this is just sort of empty space, so it's not creating a problem. The prop is all sorts of chewed up. Let's see. Took the lower unit off, and uh, the water pump... Uh, the water pump is in great shape, which is insane to me. But one side of the water pump housing is cracked, and the bushing... The aluminum bushing in there had disintegrated. It just turned to clay. It just... It just noped and deleted itself out of existence uh, which was insane because the other three were perfectly fine and the the block for the unit was fine but uh, that one bushing just deleted itself and the stainless steel bolt in there sheared off on me twice and I had to drill straight through it put a screw extractor in it turn that and that cracked the block for the lower unit but it, all it did was just introduce a hairline crack on either side of the threads and I could still thread a bolt down in there. So I'm actually got the hardware right there and I'm just gonna replace that, or just jury rig that back together because I don't wanna have to spend, you know, 30 something dollars on a whole water pump rebuild kit, you know, on something that has a cracked block. So I'm just gonna put thread locker in it and run with it. That I'm gonna Dremel out and pack with JB Weld because I don't have a TIG welder. And let's see, over here at the carburetor, there was a, uh, tree ant nest inside of the carburetor so the carburetor is in the garage over there uh, I totally disassembled the carburetor and it is in exceptional shape it is beautiful looking I was even able to reuse all the gaskets and the ants weren't into the fuel bowl or anything they were just in the uh, whatever you call it the cleaner unit silencer thing in there but uh, they're also in the intake which is kind of why I have this sucker stuffed in there I don't know if you can see them yeah, see, there's a dead ant. I sprayed, uh, the ants apparently don't like, um, what do you call it, penetrating oil? So I just uh, sprayed penetrating oil in there, and uh, they seem to die. But uh, I think they're up inside the intake, too. I found them everywhere. They're underneath the flywheel, they're in the carburetor, they're in the silencer, they're in the intake. I even found them in the water pump. So uh, there's a just ants everywhere. They weren't inside of the uh, piston, they're inside of the cylinders, as far as I could tell, but they're probably in the crankcase to some degree. 
let's see, a spring was broken over here on the recoil starter, so I had to repair that. Uh, yeah, and uh, this sucker seized. Oh, and uh, it was it was full of dirt. This was just all dirt in here when I got it as well, because the seal on that's ruined because it's been sitting in UV light for, what, 30 years, 40 years? And yeah, but the, I took the fuel pump off. Fuel pump seems to be fine. And so far, the only things I've had to buy to fix this, other than buying a flywheel puller, because I just hadn't bought one yet, but that's neither here nor there, was a piece of 3 16 fuel line to connect that to the carburetor and that stainless steel bolt and bronze bushing over there. But, but the one thing is we did test the compression, we did test the spark, and we got spark on the top cylinder. So everything ahead of this ignition coil works. And uh, I think it's just this bottom ignition coil. And we did a compression test and it's low, but it's good and it's even on both. So I think that's more just a consequence of the Chinesium compression tester. So it's the, it's, it's weird and a hot mess. So anyway, that's the history. All right, so the first step with disassembly of this tiller arm is take top cover off and make sure you got it someplace you can work on it. I got this nice stand. And uh, then what you need to do is you need to pop these two tabs off right here of this cover that covers up this linkage. Mine is old and broken. If you have an old one, it's gonna break. So uh, just be ready. And then what you have to do after that is lift this arm up. You don't have to lift it up, but it makes everything easier. And you need a 9 16th wrench and a 3 8 wrench or a very small socket and you need to get this 9 8 nut right here and hold that stationary and then turn this 3 8 bolt in here and when you loosen that that nut will fall off that bolt will come out and this whole tiller arm will come off and you also need to note uh, where these gears are lined up because they are keyed they they have these little nubs right here which uh, determine its extreme rotation in either direction so uh, just make sure you do like this and record how they're lined up and uh, make sure you put them back uh, in the right location so get that bolt off and then you can take that tiller arm off and you can start to work on that guy down there all right tiller arms off uh, just FYI, that is threaded, which is annoying and I think totally unnecessary. So uh, once you get that nut off, you basically need to put a wrench on the, or a ratchet on the back of that bolt, and then set it to loosen. Tilt the tiller arm up, then tilt, wait, I'm from the future. It's future Tom to past Tom. Uh, there's a, there's just a hole over here, so uh, you can actually uh, take this tiller arm on and off uh, way easier uh, just with you know about a foot of extension maybe not even that you can probably get by with about uh, nine inches so uh, yeah uh, no reason to uh, fight that that's uh, that's much easier so uh, do that uh, everyone at home uh, don't don't listen to past me he was stupid slowly wrench it off and it takes forever next step is I believe you need to get that snap ring off so that you can pull this whole bushing out that way. Um, far as I can tell, that's what needs to be done. And that should just allow you to pull this whole shaft and all of this right on out, which would be nice. And uh, then we'll have to move on to uh, disassembling all of this linkage right here after that, which requires taking this screw off, taking this out, um, then you gotta pull this cotter pin out, lift this up, off, and over, which is kind of difficult, and it wants to fight, move that arm out of the way, and then you need to pull the recoil starter, which is just this big bolt up here, but then you gotta be careful you don't let the thing unwind, and just zip tie that together so it doesn't fall apart, and hanging out of the way. Then you gotta take these two bolts off down there, which will let you pull this arm right up out of here. And then we gotta work on these gears. Oh joy. Well, got that guy out. That was uh, not hard at all. Oh, right, or the snap ring didn't fight. Um, yeah, she just pulls right on out and this goes right through the washer and the snap ring. So you just have to pull it out, catch them. Then I've got them back on here so I don't forget to put them back on. And uh, actually this head will come right off if you need it to. 
it's not held in by anything. So uh, I don't need that off, so I'll just leave it like that. And we'll see if I can show you what's going on up in here. How well you can make it out. It appears to be not at all. There you go. That You can sort of see it. See that tan thing back in there? That is the bushing I'm talking about. That guy? That's seized. And what I need to do is get everything out of the way. And uh, I'm going to spray some penetrating oil up in there. And then I'm going to get a punch and just basically push that sucker right on out. Because uh, it's just like this. And it's got that big fat plastic piece on it. And that's just seized all up inside of here. At least that's what I'm thinking. So uh, I need that to spin freely. And uh, All right, so I got in here with a little 3 8 wooden dowel. Just jammed that in there, hit it out. I got it to come out about uh, maybe 16th of an inch, maybe 3 30 seconds. Then I was able to hit it back and forth a bunch of times, spray the absolute hell out of it with uh, penetrating oil. Then I tried whacking on this accelerator arm to see if I could get it to move, and uh, as you can see, all I really did was wallow out the other bolt, so we're going to stop doing that. Since then, all I've done is I removed the recoil starter. It's just this 916 bolt on top. You just back it out till it's loose, and then you pull it out, push this bolt all the way back through, or you're going to regret it. And then get a zip tie and just put it through the teeth. Make sure you get it on either side of these little wings here, and... Uh, Get it on one side of the bolt and on the top and the other side on the bottom. Zip it down and then just hang it off the side. And that keeps that from unwinding and that's just a nightmare and you don't want to have to deal with that. Then I came over here and I took this arm off of the accelerator. And that's just this little cotter pin up here. Just bend it flat, pull it back out. There's a nylon washer on top. Pull that off and then you just get a pair of pliers or a screwdriver in here and you just pick it up like that and pry it off the top, it's kind of tight. Next step is you gotta take this guy out of here, it's just a big ass Phillips, flathead, sorry. Just pull that out. And that'll let you get down in there and bother that guy. Just gonna take these off. And uh, if you wanna get this guy out, all it is is just a um, snap ring down there and I believe you can just pull the whole unit straight on out. I did that before. And uh, now that you got that done, uh, you're going to need to take these uh, two, I believe it's three eighths. Yep, these two three eighths bolts off. And uh, that'll free up this arm. You got to watch out. You got, uh, two, you got a two sided bracket holding it on. So you take it off, two bolts fall out, bracket falls out, and that comes out, and then the bracket falls out. Just make sure you catch them, and then you can pull this whole thing straight on up and out. And if you have the flywheel off, it makes your life easier, but I've already put it back on. So uh, pretty sure you can get it out without it. And then once you get that off, out, then you got clear access to them gears down there. All right, got that guy out. Uh, pro tip, uh, you can just uh, take the outside bolt off and then take the other bolt three quarters of the way out and then you can just drop one of these brackets down out of the way and then just pull her right on out. So now we can see down on in there and I believe there is a metal bushing in the center of that and if I can I'm going to pull that straight on out. I'm hoping I can. In which case I can slide that gear right out that way and then I should be able to drive that out. And uh, I'm probably going to take this guy off too just so I have the extra room in there for my fat fingers. Alright, so we got that bushing out. Um, I was hoping it was going to be a steel bushing, like a stainless steel one or something. I could just stick a magnet on and pull it right out. But I was not so lucky. So I tried using a pick and that didn't work just mostly because the pick was too wide. If you had a, if you had a piece of metal that was, you know, maybe... 16th of an inch thick and it came down and just had like a 1 8th of, a, of an inch, maybe maybe 1 16th of an inch turn to a needle point, I bet you you could stick it all the way down in there, stick it under it, pull it right out. But a solution I came up with is I grabbed a number 10 uh, screw and I just threaded it in, you know, very loosely by hand and uh, that just gave me enough purchase that I could lift it and pull it right out. It appears to be the same sort of nylon plastic appears to be nylon like everything else actually this thing and the shaft are like bakelite or some sort of like proto glass filled nylon which is kind of cool so 
So now that I got that out, I should be able to pull this gear out. There we go. Whew, that's grody. And uh, yeah, I can clean that up. Hopefully this thing isn't broken. Doesn't appear to be. But yeah, she needs some TLC. And now I should just be able to take a hammer and just drive this out. And I'll clean that up, clean out the inside of this chamber, grease the snot out of everything, and make sure that it works. And I just got to make sure I put it back in the right way, too. All right, here we go. All right, once I got that out, that was uh, no problem at all. Um, she just popped right on out there with the punch. And uh, I don't know if you can see it down in there, but... There's, uh, there's a pretty sizable pit in the side of the aluminum there. So that's probably what was binding it up. She uh, tried to put her back in there and she's a bit firm. So uh, I'm gonna have to get some sandpaper in there and just clean that out and uh, maybe just take a little bit of material off the side of this, slather everything down with grease, put it all back together and see if it runs. Um, don't know why I said runs so weird there, but that's all greased up and sanded. Spins fairly freely, as freely as it should. And yeah, now just do everything in reverse, and uh, you've you've totally pulled out and cleaned up your throttle system. If it still sees, then it, it's this guy up here. So uh, check into that. But uh, mine's nothing's wrong with mine, so I'm not gonna mess with that. But you got to pull the flywheel off to be able to get to that stuff. All right, I think I figured it out. If you look down in there, there's two nubs, one on this gear and one on this gear, and I'm assuming that. They need to uh, line up directly above each other like that because there's uh, only two nubs on the whole thing and uh, that's about the position that it needs to be in for it to be back together. So I should probably check that, but uh, I'm just going to do it like this. All right, that's all back together. It actually only goes together one way. Uh, there's only two spots where you can mess it up and that's not lining up those uh, timing teeth on these two gears and not aligning these correctly. And these are way easier to align because... Well, that shows up, but they've got those two big fat gears, or two big fat teeth. You just got to make sure you line up those two big fat teeth so that they fit into the corresponding big fat openings. And uh, yeah, it all only goes together one way. Uh, this thing, they were even smart enough to, uh, they have little uh, teeth on the square ends of this drive shaft. And, well it's not drive shaft, throttle shaft, whatever you want to call it. And on this side, it's got two teeth, and on that side, it's got three teeth, so it can only go on one way, and it can only fit in to each side of this gear one way. So, that's pretty straightforward. So yeah, the only thing I gotta do is uh, just finish putting that on, and uh, put the recoil starter back in. Yeah. Hope that helps. Go out there, tear some water, hit some wakes, have fun. Tom out. Yeah.